feature flagging is addictive. Once you start using it, it's easy to start using it everywhere. And if you don't practice good code hygiene, it's easy to get yourself in trouble. Over time, teams using feature flags could face the problem of leaving stale flags in their code. This could lead to increased code complexity, making it harder for your developers to write good, clean, simple code. Ideally, your team should plan to clean up flags soon after a feature has been released to all of your users. But due to business pressures, that may not always be practical, and over time, feature flags will accumulate and get stale. For this reason, it's important to plan to retire flags no longer needed. Some teams will do this by scheduling a quarterly flag archive event and even turn it into a contest to see who can archive the most flags during that period. But as simple as it sounds, retiring a flag isn't all that trivial. To do it safely means you will need to, one, make sure that the flag is evaluating to only one value for all your users, and two, make sure that the flag is no longer referenced in your code base. But making sure that a flag is no longer in the code base can be time consuming, right? Especially if you have more than one code base where that flag may reside. Well, guess what? LaunchDarkly has a tool for that. We call it code references. With code references, you can see exactly where your flags are being used. This makes it easy to find and evaluate if it's safe to remove a flag. Let's look at an example. Here we have a feature flag that was deployed a few months ago. The first thing we want to verify is that this flag is evaluating to one value for all users. We can easily see this on the Insights tab. This is showing us the flag evaluation over the last 60 days. So far, I think it's safe to say that this flag can be retired. But before we can do that, we need to make sure that this flag is no longer being referenced in our code base which we do know it's still being used in our code base because the Insights tab shows that it's being evaluated. If our code was no longer referencing this flag, the chart on this page should be empty. With that, let's look at the Code References tab. Here, we'll see exactly where our flag is used in our code base. As you can see, this flag is referenced in a few places. We'll use this as a reference when removing our code. After we've removed the reference in our branch, we can come back to this page and see if we got them all. When we're ready, we can create a pull request to make it official. Once it's merged in, we can go back to the flag page and make sure the flag is no longer being evaluated by looking at the Insights tab. Now let's take a look at how code references work. The code references functionality relies on an open source utility called LD Find Code Ref. This utility scans your code and pushes code referencing feature flags to launch darkly. You can integrate this utility into your CI CD process or use trigger mechanisms like GitHub Actions, cron jobs, or commit triggered functions. We offer built in configurations for common trigger mechanisms and CI CD providers including Bitbucket Pipelines, CircleCI Orbs, GitHub Actions, and GitLab CI. However, if those don't work for you, you can easily just invoke the LD Find Code Ref utility from the command line in any custom workflow such as a shell script or cron job. Well, that's it. I hope LaunchDarkly's Code References feature helps you maintain a nice, tidy code base while allowing you to realize the full benefits of feature flagging.